my name is Sean Barfield. I'm the audio visual manager at the Cultural Heritage Center. We are currently in production on a graphic novel titled Wadase, which means warrior. It's set in the War of 1812. Uh, during this time of quarantine and staying indoors and being safe, I thought I would share a tutorial showing the steps that I use to create a page for the graphic novel. Currently, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq. I'm also using Autodesk Sketchbook, but these steps will work with whatever drawing software you prefer. So I use certain techniques and layers to achieve those steps, and it's really sped up my process by working in this way. So I thought I would share that and uh, help out other artists who are maybe interested in drawing their own comic books while they're at home. Our first step that we're going to look at is sketching. So I'll kind of just comment as we review this uh, sketch process. So initially I have no idea what I'm going to draw. I have no preconceived ideas. All I know is that I'm going to draw a dwarf. I know um, from different films and such there's a certain look that we're looking for when we talk about dwarves. So, of course, they're going to be short, but they're also very stocky, and there's a lot of square shapes rather than curved shapes with dwarves. So, I am, I usually like to start with a head and a face, and then work out from that. Some people like to lay out all their shapes first. Uh, whatever works best for you is fine. But here you could see I, I laid out somewhat of a shape for a head, and then just started working on the face rather than laying out shapes for the rest of the body. Now, this allows me to be happy with the most important piece, you know, the most important part of this, uh, of this scene, which is the main subject, the character. So if I'm happy with his facial expressions and happy with... Uh, that most important part of the character, then I can go ahead and lay out the rest of the body. But either way is fine, whatever works best for you. Here I'm deciding that uh, rather than showing his hair, I've laid out a sort of a chain mail for his neck. Now I'm beginning to block out his, his torso, and of course giving him gigantic shoulder pads to give him more of a, a square look. And, of course, we're seeing through objects right now. We're just in a sketch phase. So it's a lot of fun in the sketch phase because this is where you get to explore and experiment. Here I noticed the uh, lines started to look, um, started to give a shape for the breastplate. So I went ahead and used the sort of accident of being loose and sketchy to give me a interesting piece of armor. So a lot of times you're looking for happy accidents in this sketch phase. It's okay to be very loose and very messy. It's okay to mess up in this phase. Those mess ups might become something better than what you had intended. Now here I'm laying out blocky thick arms and I turned his arm more inward there so we can see two ideas of what's going on for the arm. And so now that I've got the face roughly where I want it, I, you can see I'm now blocking out the body to sort of fit the most important part. But again, how you lay out your characters up to you. This is just that fun experimental phase. So I'm moving the character up so I can add the legs. Here you'll notice that I, I draw a very big hand, so the hand is abnormally large, but I liked the shape of it, so I knew, okay, I got the shape right, I can always shrink that hand later. Here I wasn't sure what our character would be doing, but of course in thinking about dwarves and then also thinking about wizards, I ended up with a little pipe here. And so now I'm uh, shrinking that hand, placing it more where I want it, 
no problem. The great thing about the sketch phase is you can pick up, move, cut out pieces, and reshape them, stretch them out, resize them however you want. So if th something goes too big, it's okay. You can always shrink it and resize it. I'm putting in the axe that he's leaning on. He's got a large blade axe. And you can see he's got different belts and straps that I'm just adding as aesthetics. Now we're putting on somewhat of a, a backpack. And I'm thinking about um, cultural er elements. Uh, you know, what, what is he wearing? So I've got him somewhat of a a kilt here. And I'm just reviewing the image. I'm looking around to see what I want to add. I want to flesh out this shoulder pads more now. Flesh out, get the uh, beard shape more defined. So our sketch face, our sketch phase is sort of a notebook phase. We're just writing notes to ourselves where we want our ink to go. Because after this sketch phase, we're going to go into an inking phase where we make very distinct marks for our image. So it's not sketchy and loose and blurry. We have very distinct lines from the inks. And now I'm just working out more and more details at a small level. So we're just getting in tighter and tighter. We've got our big shape down. Now we're getting into a tighter view and working on some details that we know we want to come through in the inking process. I can quickly go and erase. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just clear up a little bit of space for new lines and new ideas or new details. Here we're adding a uh, adding a belt for our character. I thought I would um, put the buckle off to the side, not quite centered. Now I'm just adding a piece of leather that that goes around the hip just for just for aesthetics, it doesn't. I didn't give it a function as of right now. I'm adding a little bag here, so he has a lot of utility going on. He has bags and straps and shoulder pads. So we're just fleshing out those belts and straps, and then I decide on sort of a chain mail at this point here. Not quite sure how I'm going to ink that chain mail either. So I've not really attempted a chain mail so I'm going to just go through that process and decide how that works while I'm inking. Again fleshing out what the shoulder pads might look like. Giving it a little bit of a ridge all the way around the shoulder pad. Just making my lines more distinct with the straps and understanding what's happening with the with the breastplate. So again, this is our, our fun phase where we get to really experiment, change things, define things, figure out the relationship of the character to the background. The sketch phase can definitely be where you're having the most fun. Uh, hands of course can be challenging uh, but this one came together rather quick.
Now I'm deciding to give him some bracers. This is all probably a 30 minute process for this initial sketch. Actually, I think it was closer to 40 minutes. And of course, we got it sped up a little bit, but um, this is the whole sketching process for the character that we're doing in the, in the series. So in the next phase, we'll see the inking process. Uh, the inking process is definitely more challenging. Um, of course, I'm doing it on the computer, so I can always undo a mistake, whereas those who ink uh, on paper, they've just got that one chance. I mean, they can use whiteout, but it becomes very uh, difficult to control the cleanness of the lines. So... But nevertheless, it's still a more challenging process than just sketching, even if you're using a computer. And so now we can see we're getting down to the last portion of our character and just putting in leather straps for the boots and giving more definition to his large dwarf feet. <clears throat> and I'm keeping in mind uh, which way the light's coming from. Now, in this sketch, it's very neutral. I haven't really committed to any hard shading yet. So, uh, we do want to... You know, we do want to keep in mind where the light's coming from, but in this sketch phase, you don't really have to work that much with shading. And now we're just finishing off that last little bit with the, uh, with the axe, giving a little bit more solid lines. And this will be our layer that everything else works from. And so next time we can look at the inking process, which is a much more delicate art. Uh, you have to use certain pressures. You have to press harder and, and lighter depending on what you're working, working on, what type of material it is, which way the light is striking it. But this uh, is the most fun phase. Now I'm finishing off a few more details here. I decide to add a sort of a walking stick and going to add a bottle and a bag to it. I didn't like the shape of that one, so we quickly erase and put in another one. So now we have a bottle attached to our character. We got to, I decide I want some sort of a green liquid in there. Now we've attached a leather or cloth bag. I've also wanted to give this character a, a familiar or a pet or something that it works with. Um, so initially I start with some sort of little goblin character, something like a gremlin. Here I'm putting on a little bit of a gremlin face here. But I ultimately decide it's going to take a little bit too much time to figure out this character. And it may be distracting. So I decide to go. I think I thought about what would what would fit good with a, a short creature. You know, like a dwarf. And so I end up going with a rat, which still looks like a pretty good size on a dwarf. Of 
So I had none of this in mind when I began the sketch. Uh, that's the great, again, the great part about sketching is you're free to just try things over and over until you get what you want for a final product. So here I've quickly sketched out the familiar for our character. And so now we have pretty much our first step completed. And there we have our first sketch and where we want the light to come from. So I'm just giving myself a note for this character, where the light's coming from. And there's our first complete sketch. And I want to say thank you. And everyone, be sure to be safe out there. Follow all the rules for safety. And stay indoors. And I hope you enjoy this uh, series on my process and my steps that I use for creating our graphic novel, Wadasseh.